Coming up in this video, I create a WireGuard VPN on my Unified Dream Machine, and initially it doesn't work. It led me on to learn about something called CGNATs, which I'd never heard of until now. So stick around to see what CGNAT actually is, and how I got my WireGuard VPN to work. Spoiler alert, I cheated. So I've already installed the WireGuard client on my Windows machine. It doesn't currently have any tunnels set up, but I'll come back to that in a second. I'm currently connected to a mobile phone hotspot and I want to be able to VPN onto my home network while I'm away from home. First of all, I need to go into my UDM Pro config and as I'm on a mobile hotspot and not on my home network, I'll browse to unify.ui.com to access my UDM Pro over the internet. From the site manager, I'll select my UDM Pro. And from the dashboard, I'll go into settings and then click on VPN then VPN server. I'll make sure WireGuard is selected as the VPN server type and then I'll give it a meaningful name. I then need to choose my one IP address. I only have one internet connection connected to my UDM Pro so I'll go ahead and select it. Next I need to decide what IP addresses and how many I want the VPN server to give out to my VPN clients. You can just leave it set on auto and accept the default options but I'll choose manual and specify a different IP range that I want to use for my remote clients. I'm also going to change the number of usable hosts. I only have a few devices that I want to connect to the VPN, so I'll choose the lowest option available, which is five usable hosts. And the last thing I need to configure is what DNS do I want my VPN clients to use. By default, it will be set to auto, which will set the DNS of the VPN adapter to use the UDM Pro for DNS resolution. You can deselect auto and enter some other DNS settings if you prefer. I'll just leave mine set to auto. Finally, I'll click on add to add the VPN and save the changes. Next, I need to add a client, so I'll go ahead and click on add client. I'll change the name to a more meaningful name. You could just use the host name of the client device, but I'll use laptop one for this example. If you want to specify a particular IP address you want to be assigned to this client, then under authorization, you can click on manual and specify the IP address you want the device to use. Bear in mind it has to be an IP address within the range that is specified when setting up the VPN server. I'll leave mine on auto and it will automatically use the next available IP address in that range. There's also a note here which is basically telling you to create a new client for each device that you'll use on the VPN and that you shouldn't share the same configuration file for multiple devices. If you did use the same configuration file then they would all get the same IP addresses. And if they all connected at the same time, then you would end up with IP address conflicts. So you should always create a new device for each machine that you want to use on the VPN. I then need to click on the download link to download the configuration file and save it to a location of my choice. I'm actually on the laptop that I'll be using this VPN client on, but you could use any device to create and download the VPN configuration file. Then just manually copy it to another device, either directly or via cloud storage, or you could even email the configuration file to another machine. Once I've downloaded the file, I'll click on add to add the device and then apply changes. I can then import that configuration file into the WireGuard client. So in the WireGuard client, I'll click on add tunnel and then select the configuration file that I just created. And that's it. My VPN server is set up and I've configured my first client. I'll click on activate to connect to the VPN and a split second later it appears to have connected and the status has changed to active. So it looks like it's connected successfully. If I open a command prompt and do IP config, I can see the IP address of my Wi-Fi adapter which is connected to my mobile hotspot. And if I scroll up a bit, I can see my VPN IP address that the WireGuard VPN server has assigned to me. So that all looks good. But if I try and ping a device on my home network that I know is turned on, it doesn't respond. So why isn't it working? Well, after spending a few hours troubleshooting, I finally realized what the problem was. I searched on Google for people who had reported similar problems and I came across something called CGNAT, which stands for Carrier Grade NAT, or to give it its full name, Carrier Grade Network Address Translation. If you've made it this far into the video, I suspect you'll know what Network Address Translation is. But if not, then NAT basically allows multiple devices on a private network to share a single public IP address for internet access. The router at your home or business handles all of the network address translation on your network, so your router will have a public IP address assigned to it from your ISP. But all your internal devices connected to the router will have a private IP address. That will be usually something like a 192 address for a small network, whereas larger networks inside a business 
might have a 172 or 10 dot address. And these are private IP ranges which are meant for devices inside a private network. So let's say one of my devices, which I'll call device A, connects to a service out on the internet, Spotify for example. My router will translate device A's internal IP address into my public IP address and then send that data on to Spotify. And when Spotify needs to return some information back to me, it will send that information back to my public IP address, which is assigned to my router. And then the router will translate back to the private IP address of device A. So NAT keeps track of all the devices on the network and ensures data from the internet goes to and from the correct device. And it's the reason why we're able to have multiple devices use the internet via a single public IP address. Well, carrier grade NAT is the same thing, but for public IP addresses. As well as your router handling all of the NAT for your devices inside your network, there's an extra device at the ISP level which is providing NAT for your public IP address. That means with CG NAT your ISP is providing you with a shared public IP address and CG NAT translates a real public IP address to the CG NAT IP address, which is the one that gets assigned to your router. It's like a second layer of NAT on your internet connection. In most cases, most people won't notice any difference in their internet access if they've got a CG NAT IP address, as opposed to a regular public IP address. However, one thing that probably won't work with CG NAT is a VPN connection back into your network. Although it's not impossible to get a VPN working on CG NAT, it does add a level of complexity to the task. So when I found out that my WireGuard VPN connection wasn't working, I checked what public IP address had been assigned to my router. And sure enough, it turned out to be a CG NAT address instead of a regular public IP address. In other words, I'm sharing my public IP address with other customers instead of having a dedicated public IP address all to myself. You might be wondering how I worked out that I was given a CG NAT address. Well, if you Google CG NAT IP address, it will show you the range of IP addresses that are set aside for CG NAT connections. And we can see here that any address that falls within the range of 100.64.0.0 and 100.127.255.255 is a CG NAT address. So if I go back to my UDM Pro, it shows me the public IP address that has been assigned to my internet connection. And we can see that it's an address that falls within the CG NAT range. So how did I resolve it? Well, I said earlier, it's not impossible to get a VPN working with CG NAT, but seemingly it's not that straightforward to do. So instead, I contacted my ISP and asked them if they could provide me with a regular public IP address. Initially, they said that they wouldn't be able to guarantee that I would always receive a public IP address, as most addresses in their pool are CG net addresses. However, they did give me the option to have a permanent static public IP address for a small additional charge to my monthly payment. So I added the static IP address to my package, which immediately fixed the VPN issue that I was having. So fast forward to today, and if I check my UDM Pro dashboard, I can see my internet IP address, which is now a regular public IP address, rather than a CG NAT address. And if I go back into the WireGuard application, I've recreated the tunnel because my internet IP address has changed. The client configuration needed to be updated with my new public IP address. I've just deleted the tunnel and created a new one exactly the same way that I did earlier in the video. I'll click on activate to connect to the VPN, and it connects successfully. And this time, if I try and ping a device on my network, it responds successfully, which means the VPN is now working. I can now interact with the devices on my network as if I was connected locally. So that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you found it useful, especially if you're on a CG NAT connection and wondering why your VPN isn't working. If you want to find out more about NAT and CG NAT, then check out the links in the description below. And if you have any questions or comments about this video, I'd love to see them in the comments below. Thanks for watching and bye for now.